Hello and welcome back family. Welcome back YouTube family. Woo! All right, we are back at it with another video. We are talking about how do therapists diagnose? I'm here to give you the ins and outs, but before we get started, go on ahead and hit that bell so that you get notified when I post dope mental health content. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out. I'm dope, you're dope, let's create a dope community. Let's go ahead and get into it. How do therapists diagnose? Okay, so let's say if you've gone to see a therapist and you got a diagnosis of say MDD, major depressive disorder, and you're wondering, bitch, how you come up with that? You might have known you depressed, but you wanna know how they came up with it. Trust me, it's important that you know. Oh my God, wow. Let's go ahead and talk about it. The first thing is, if you are going to see a therapist and they are a master's level therapist, recognizing that we are taking the information that you give us and using that to make a diagnosis. Master's level therapists cannot do psychological testing. That is reserved for people like psychologists. They got the doctorate degrees, so they can do the psychological testing. We as master level therapists, we do assessing. Let's talk about this. So let's say you have an intake form and it has all of these symptoms. What are you feeling? Low energy, are you feeling sad? Are you feeling isolated? Are you feeling like you wanna harm yourself? Are you feeling sleep, like your sleep isn't on par? Are you feeling lack of appetite? It may have a whole list of symptoms and say you check off some of those things. It works differently for every therapist. Some therapists look at the intake before you come in. Some therapists look at the intake while you're in the session. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we, actually let me just tell you what I'm gonna do because I know that not every therapist does things the same. Psychology is a very subjective field. With that being said, I'm gonna look at all the things that you have checked off for symptoms. Now, immediately when I am looking at these symptoms, knowing that there are different types of symptoms in that intake that can lead to different diagnoses. But depending on what you have chosen, I've already created a hypothesis in my head. In addition to that, I'm now going to listen to that when you are telling me the story of your mental health journey. Now that I've made a hypothesis, so let's say you checked off isolation, trouble falling asleep, worry, lack of appetite, and now I need to know duration. Yes, what does duration mean? I need to know how long have you been feeling this way? Because depending on how long, that is going to help me make a diagnosis. So we have things like adjustment disorder, MDD. So depending on how long you have been experiencing these symptoms, that is also going to help us determine which diagnosis. So now you're sitting in the session, you're giving us all the details, you're being vulnerable, you're feeling like, help me. We have this hypothesis about you around diagnosing, not a judgment, a hypothesis. And we are now going to look for information to confirm that. So if I look at your intake and I'm thinking, okay, MDD, I'm going to ask duration. I'm also going to be asking in a seven day span, how often? Do you feel this way? Do you feel this way more days than not? Then I need to know how is this impacting you? Work, school, in your relationship. I need to know where is the impact happening? Again, I have a hypothesis and I'm testing it. I'm trying to see if the information that you give me is going to confirm that. After that, we now need to verify the criteria. So this could take place some therapists got all the diagnoses up here. I'm not gonna lie. I maybe got adjustment disorder up here, MDD and anxiety. Outside of that, I'm gonna need to go to the DSM to figure out. So I need to verify the criteria. I'm going to go and make sure that what I have been testing meets the criteria in the DSM. Now, once I've done that, I'm also going to be mindful of the type of diagnosis that I put on someone's profile. Because I have seen people that come to me, they're 22 years old, say for instance, and they've had all these diagnoses since they were a kid. P 
PTSD, ODD, anxiety disorder, MDD. There is no reason that an adult should have all those darn diagnoses. Hear me out. I'm not saying that one person cannot experience those things, but what I am saying is that there is a way to go about diagnosing someone so that it does not impact them. Let me clarify what I mean by this. Having a kid diagnosed as ADD when they are under the age of 18 impacts how schools view them, impacts how their parents view them, and even sometimes unconsciously impacts how the therapist interacts with them. On top of that, some people can take on shame from their diagnosis. So I want to make sure when I am diagnosing someone, I am explaining to them why I am choosing that diagnosis. After that is said and done, we choose the F number and we put it on. Now, after that is said and done, we choose the diagnosis and that is what goes on your mental health record. Now, if you have self-pay, know that technically the therapist doesn't have to diagnose you, but if there is a diagnosis present, we will. Now, here's the flip side to that coin. When you use insurance, you cannot have a diagnosis. But in order to pay for services with insurance, your therapist does have to diagnose you. And it's important that your therapist explains that. Now, I know that some therapists like to slap an adjustment disorder because like, I don't know what else. And so they sort of slap the adjustment disorder on there. And that honestly was what I was taught. But I like to explain to clients what happens when you get a diagnosis. And that is how therapists diagnose. That's how I diagnose. I'm not saying that that's not how it's done, but understanding that overall and in general, that's how diagnoses are made. I wanna thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And I wanna make content that helps you along your mental health journey because this is your safe place for all things mental health. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Deuces.